please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hello and welcome to this special show. In one of the largest domestic pharma consolidation deals in India, Torrent Pharma has acquired the India and Nepal business of Mumbai-based Unicam Laboratories for 3600 crore rupees. CNBC TV18 broke this story last week. The deal takes to 3600 crore rupees. CNBC TV18 broke this story last week. The deal takes Torrent to the fifth rank in the highly competitive Indian pharmaceutical market and involves brands, it involves people, and a manufacturing site. We have Vikas Dandekar with us to share the deal contours and its implications for the uh, India market and industry. Vikas, uh, thanks for joining us here on the show. Um, tell us, how does this Lul uh, deal look uh, to you? You know, we've heard about this deal in the last couple of years. We've seen the valuations change over the months. Um, what does it hold for Unichem, for Torrent, and what picture does it paint for the industry as a whole? Right. This is a very interesting uh, development and as you rightly said, after a long time, this has really come to fruition. Unicam has been looking for some buyer for its domestic market. Uh, it's been reported a few times also. Uh, basically, you know, for these mid-tier companies, there has always been a question of growth. The larger companies tend to acquire market share. The smaller companies with their influence with local doctors do manage good sales. What gets complicated is the problem for this uh, mid-tier companies like Unicam and it's a reasonable valuation for Torrent. It can really afford because it's it set up a good, uh, uh, you know, India footprint with this and it gets a lot of therapeutic uh, uh, products like uh, Sartans in antihypertensives and it really looks like a good strategic fit for Torrent at a reasonable valuation. So Torrent always set, uh, steps in, it looks at a lot of deals but it comes in at the right time. So this is exactly what should happen to, to Torrent. Um, in terms of the industry, this is also an indicator of a consolidation move because now it looks like, you know, there will be more deals for these kind of companies which have a, a nice bouquet of products which can be grown with good management and it can be developed and it can be promoted. So probably this could be the next level of consolidation within the Indian market with nothing else, else left in terms of opportunistic buyouts in US because the pricing pressure is there. Rest of the world market is pretty wobbly. I think India will be the the the, the market which most of the companies will look forward to. All right, so when going gets tough um, on the global front, companies are now looking inwards. Well, thanks Vikas for that. Uh, in fact, my colleagues uh, Nisha Podar and Ekta Batra just met Prakash Modi, chairman of Unicam Laboratories. Let's go straight to that conversation. All right, we have with us uh, Dr. Prakash Modi, uh, the chairman uh, of uh, Unicam Laboratories. Uh, Dr. Modi, many congratulations on this large transaction. So India and Nepal business uh, being sold for 3,600-odd crore rupees uh, to Torrent Pharma. Now, this is a slump uh, sale. And you have said in the press release that the deal will enable the organization to deliver superior results in areas of innovative research, new chemicals and biological entities, and move into next orbit of growth. Does this mean that this is not going to reward the shareholders in terms of the cash that you're going to get? And uh, finally, how much cash after the tax outgo really happens because it's a slump sale? See, basically, what I want to be clear with you is that if we have to go into the next orbit as far as the international business is concerned, mm -hmm. we were relatively late starters in this business. Mm -hmm. However, we have been able to get a good amount of catch up on that. At the same time, if we have to move from what I call vanilla generics and get into complex generics or new chemical entities or new biological entities, yes. you would agree that's the future. Yes. And clearly, with the kind of footprints we've been able to make in a relatively short time in the developed world, Hmm. particularly because of our formulation capability and our R&D backups. Hmm. We felt this was the right time when we should make more investments in this. Hmm. So one part of the proceeds would be after tax, obviously, hmm. to see that we really fortify and grow that business. At the same time, we would certainly want to reward the shareholders who have been with us all this while. How much uh, so proceeds will go the in proceeds basically much, what yeah. we are uh, aiming to do is to come out with clear-cut plans yes. and by the 
the quarterly meeting of the board in the next quarter, yeah. we would be coming with clear-cut plans hmm. so that we can then let you know because but obviously... at least an approximate, like is it going to be 50-50, 70-30, uh, in what range is it? Because clearly the shareholders will really react to this transaction on Monday and uh, they really need to know that how much could really come in terms of reward. So if you can give us at least a ballpark figure of the 3,000 odd crore rupees post-tax, uh, which could be really used for rewarding the shareholders and how much will go in really refueling the company for next wave of well, growth. I would think that as far as the uh, formulation augmentation is concerned, maybe it would come to a couple of hundred crores. Okay. And then uh, the R&D, as you know, is an animal which is very difficult mm. to fathom. Hmm. Because uh, apart from the parafo filings, yes. you do know that today, the U.S. government is making life really tough for the pharma companies, whether it is the general drug user's fee, mm. whether it's the DMF filing. Yeah. Obviously, our idea is to st uh, step up our uh, number of filings mm. so that we are able to, as of today, filed and uh, already applied for our nearly 60. Mm. And in the next three years, we would like to cross the 100 mark. Yeah. So that's very clear. At the same time, you know better than me, you can do the math of what each of the filing of ANDAs mean. Hmm. In addition to that, we are also looking at new biological entities, hmm. and that would mean clinical trials at a worldwide level. Hmm. Because we need to make sure that whatever proof of concept we are able to develop is finally accepted. We are certainly not going to market those products, but we need to then find the right partners, which is going to be the second phase once we are able to establish some new biological entities. Okay. Having said all this, naturally, we want to reward the shareholders who have been very patient hmm. and believing in us all this while. So bulk of that will go for shareholders or not? I would hope so. And okay. which are, I'll just get down to the maths. Uh, 3,600 crores is exactly what the gross sale amount is. Say post capital gains tax and say a little more uh, X of that, you get around 2,800 crores in the kitty. I, am I working with the fact that you're probably going to reward shareholders with say 50% of that 2,800 crores or maybe 75%? How does it work and how much goes into the domestic business and R&D in terms of a reinvestment? No, domestic business R&D uh, Sorry, is, the uh, international no business and R&D. The international business and R&D today will definitely need a step up. Yes. Because actually speaking, A, the percentage of R&D we may be investing is say 5 to 6 percent of our turnover. Okay. Now obviously those numbers are very small as far as any uh, R&D efforts in a true sense are concerned. Mm -hmm. Because if you have to do things like complex generics and stuff, it re really requires a good amount of uh, I mean, depth in your kitty to be able to do that. So am I assuming, am I working with say 1,000 crores of a reinvestment into international and R&D together? I would think so, but it also depends on what kind of opportunities would be available. And because if we have to today look at a biological space, uh, we have quite a few biogenic molecules which are already in the clinical trial phase. Hmm. So hmm. if those have to be developed and marketed, whether we are going to do that in India or outside India, those are also choices which we need to look at. Okay. So clearly there is going to be a, 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 there is going to be an amount marked for the shareholders. Obviously. 1500 to say 1800 crores could probably be to reward shareholders. Remaining could be reinvestment. I don't think I can you uh, make you agree to. <laughs> I, uh, you can make me agree. Okay, to will it be figure. more than 50 percent of the proceeds? If if you can give a ballpark and also. Uh, by which way uh, mechanism is it going to be buyback or special dividend of course uh, well I think we will obviously look yes. at the best methods by which we can reward so and uh, you know the methods that could would be buyback would be extra dividend hmm. and also we would also have to look at the what are the laws prevailing in terms of how we can give the return dr. Modi you know this transaction has come at a time where a lot of companies are actually looking inward into the domestic business to grow it mm -hmm. and that has actually been the outperformer in your business if for example your Q2 numbers growth was 17% and you've bounced back 
fabulously from Q1 as well. Whereas your international piece is not as robust as your, uh, as your domestic piece was. So what is the rationale of exiting domestic now and focusing on international at a time when you're working with, say, pricing pressure, as well as maybe to a certain extent even currency headwind, headwinds in, inter in emerging markets? See, I personally believe that, you know, when you are in the international market, what the customer is looking for good quality and regular supply mm. and uh, to make sure that you are able to give him end-to-end -end support. Mm. So clearly we have the advantage that 90% of what we market is our own API. Okay. So we have that backup as far as that part is concerned. Mm. Similarly, when you talk about domestic, I don't say that domestic is not a great opportunity. Certainly it's a great opportunity. But the kind of skills and the kind of efforts it would require mm -hmm. as compared to what we have seen in the relatively short run, the growth in our international business. Mm -hmm. Because the international business requires much more investment. Mm -hmm. It requires much more people skills. Mm -hmm. As far as the domestic is concerned, it is much more a number game in terms of the number of people you employ. So you're not selling the international business if a scooter absolutely could, not as but, a matter of, sorry yeah but that was the rationale for the transaction what about the valuation uh, dr modi uh, 3600 crore rupees what you will get is less than 3000 odd crore rupees in my view there were many uh, international strategics who have really looked at the company a few years back you're probably getting a higher valuation as well so if you can really pen down what were the key drivers for coming to such a valuation and why did you not go for a competitive bidding process why did you enter into a bilateral transaction well basically uh, first thing was very clear that irrespective of what you may have heard the company was never out for sale yeah. These are opportunities which come your way. So as of today, there is no merchant banker who is involved with the transaction, except a close friend of mine who has been singly involved in the whole thing. <laughs> Second part is that when you look at an opportunity, if I have to think in terms of the demerger and I have to think in terms of tax efficiency, I do not know how the headwinds are today as far as the overall market is concerned. Hmm. And today, if I'm going to take a year or two by the time I demerge and look at all that, hmm. I think I might a good opportunity might slip away. Hmm. It has nothing to do with today whether I would be happy or not. <laughs> the important thing is to see that how the overall market trend is there. Hmm. And as you have seen in the last year or so, there has not been many deals which have occurred, certainly not of these sizes. Right. And so therefore, the, the point is that when you get an opportunity and some, someone comes knocking at the door, I think you have to take that opportunity and start moving ahead. So in terms of rationale of the valuations, what were the key drivers for coming to 3,600 crore? No, it's not the key drivers. I think the point is that it's obvious that if a company like Torrent has uh, taken the portfolio, it clearly means that there is a lot which they think that they can still unlock out of it. Right. And that is why... India is a great opportunity. We are a great uh, pharma opportunity. Of course, but uh, in terms of regulations, now a lot of mer uh, mergers and acquisitions have been stuck because of uh, the regulatory issues. Do you foresee uh, and uh, any issue here, any concern here, any delay here? And uh, what is going to be the roadmap First for consummation? All, I may tell you one thing that uh, this is between two Indian companies. Yeah. The, the competition law also does not apply. Hmm. The DIIP or FIPB does not apply. Hmm. So what is, applies is first to get the board permission, which we have, to sign a binding offer, then get to uh, uh, the shareholder approval, which is a process as you are well aware. So I don't really see any hmm. regulatory hassles coming in the way. Right. And therefore, I believe that what we have done this being a company which has been there for so many years in existence, hmm. we continue to exist, but we exist now on a global scale. 
All right, one more question on a slump sale. Now, this is not the most tax efficient way of uh, going about a transaction. And this is also piecemeal, which does not give the best of valuations. Did you not want to sell the entire portfolio or the entire company to get the best valuations for the shareholders? No, I do feel that we still have a lot to be unlocked, as we have unlocked in the domestic piece. There is still much more to be unlocked for the shareholders. Because today, whatever we have done in the international space has to still start giving the kind of rewards which we think it is capable of doing. So actually, if I decided to exit the business in totally, mm. I feel that I would have done a disservice to our shareholders. OK, so Dr. Modi, I'll uh, ask you to make a pitch. If the shareholders today think that what is left in the company for me to stay back after you have rewarded them, what will be your best pitch in terms of the outlook and the roadmap for the company going forward well, with investments that you're going to make? The outlook is going to be that we are going to be a very serious and committed player in the world's largest pharma generic market, which is the US, followed by Brazil, followed by Europe. Yeah. We are going to see that we make the best APIs, not only for supplying to our own formulations, but back it up. I mean, oh, but even we have got a lot of opportunity to sell the APIs. Yeah. We are also approached by major companies for contract research. Obviously, if our skills are there in new biological entities and new chemical entities, there are a lot of those opportunities. Mm -hmm. So we think that we have a roadmap where short term, medium term, long term, all we will be doing is adding value to the shareholders. In terms of numbers, targets, 2020 vision, next two years, where do you see yourself in terms of EBITDA growth? market cap of the company any numbers that you know I don't with? think I would like to or in terms of percentage guess. growth I'm only is. wishing that what I have been able to do I can do much more in the years to okay. come Dr. Modi just a quick question on the US business how much does it contribute in terms of a percentage to sales currently Today, for you? if you look at our international business the US business along with the contract manufacturing we do is nearly 58 percent of our international business okay how much does the US business contribute in terms of your entire piece of international operation so I said it's 58 percent around 58 percent and growing and is it breaking even your international well, yes, business? Yes, it's already uh, it's already not only breaking even but also giving us profit. And again, as people talk about you know this U.S. headwinds and things yes. like that, I personally believe the opportunity in that market is so huge that if you play your game right. It's not a question of following somebody else. You have confidence in what you are doing, and you are capable of doing it, number one. Number two, I know that I have the capability to run this business and to unlock more shareholder value. So, you know, the one issue which has always plagued Unichem Laboratories in terms of a rumor is the lack of a succession plan. Um, and that's maybe one of the reasons why you also sold off your domestic business that, you know, you and eventually you will sell off your international business. Mm -hmm. So can you explain that piece of the pie to us that what is the succession plan and say five years down the line, if you're talking about the, the U.S. business, how much will it be as a percentage of sales? What will it look like in terms of generic versus complex as well as maybe in terms of contract manufacturing? See, after all, the point is that for getting any complex generic to the market, mm -hmm. you know it takes its own gestation, it takes its own time. What we are trying to look at is also have intellectual property built around that because that is where also you can unlock the value. And second part which you are saying that, uh, the, I forgot the question you asked me, succession because you plan. asked me so many questions <laughs> that I've lost. No, the succession plan is first of all, I think that 60s are the new 40s, okay? So therefore, I have no interest or botheration as far as succession is concerned. What I'm looking at is I have a complete team of professionals, and those professionals under my leadership are capable to deliver. If I could do it for one business, I'm sure I could do it for and the next And what happens one. after you? Uh, well, I, what's all I can that? say is that we can look at a five or ten year plan. I cannot predict what's going to happen longer than but that. But if you get a suitor who comes and asks you whether you will sell your international business, would you say okay? No, I think at the point today there is a lot which we need to do by ourselves. 
we have the capability, we have the bandwidth, we have the knowledge and hopefully we'll have the funds. All right. Okay, on that note, uh, many congratulations on this Thank large transaction. Very, very and 60s are the new 40s, so all the <laughs> best you. for that. Thank you.